So what do you do if you spent all summer picking wild grapes, but you still don't have quite enough to make brandy? Cheat. I just said, yes, man, I, mean I spent all summer, every time I, I got off work, I went and I picked wild muscadine grapes. I ended up with between this and those bags over there, about 13 pounds or this much in metric of wild muscadine grapes. That's what grows in my area. And if you don't know what muscadine grapes are, they're kind of weird. I mean, granted these are frozen, so they look a little strange. Muscadine grapes are an acquired taste. They are spicy. If you eat them raw off of the vine, sometimes they can have so much acid in them that they will actually burn your mouth. They're not that sour, but they do have this crazy, almost pepper-like spice to them. So muscadines have some flaws. Uh, the seeds are big, the flesh is kind of gelatinous, and the skins are very tough. So <laughs> why would you pick them? Because the jelly that they make is exquisite. It is really, really good and uh, they also make good wine. I've had muscadine wine, I've never made it, but I've had it and it was really good. I just don't have enough grapes to make it. Today we're gonna find out if we can actually take those muscadines that I've got and make brandy with them. If you've done any research into home winemaking, you've probably come across recipes where people are using Welch's grape juice or any other type of uh, grape juice to make homemade wine. It's really easy. It ends up kind of tasting a little Concord grapey, uh, which is completely different from normal wine grapes. Those varietals uh, have been specially cultivated to, one, make giant clusters. Two, they have a shit ton more sugar in them. So you end up getting a lot of volume of wine when you're using real wine grapes. So making homemade wine without those is a challenge so it's easier to just go get some of this you might be worried about the clashing flavors like are you really going to be able to taste the muscadines in the the welches or is it just going to taste like welches wine well if you've ever had muscadines then you know that when i say you will definitely know there's muscadine grapes in there you know i'm telling the truth like i said the flavor is distinctive to any other grape you've ever had even frozen, the smell of muscadine grapes is so different from any other grape. So let's get this going. And remember, as always, my recipe is gonna be down in the video description, but it's very simple. I'm not gonna add any sugar. There's no added sugar to my juice. So basically all the sugar that we're getting to ferment is coming straight from grapes. All right, so we're just gonna throw all of our frozen grapes into the bucket. It looks like I have about two gallons worth of grapes. I'm gonna add three and a half gallons of grape juice to give me roughly five gallons of finished wine after it's fermented and I strain out all of the grapes. So next we're gonna add some crushed up Camden tablets. These will prevent a bacterial infection and kill anything that's on those wild grapes. I'm also adding two teaspoons of pectic enzyme to help to break down all the cell walls in those grapes and that'll release more juice and flavor. And we're also adding one and a quarter teaspoons of Fermaid K yeast nutrient and I'm adding three teaspoons of acid blend to uh, help kind of balance out the flavors in case I wanna save a bottle of this for wine. If you're not planning on using this for wine, you can skip the acid blend. So you may have noticed that I didn't add any yeast yet, and that's because I added some of these Camden tablets. If you were to add your commercial yeast right now, it would totally stop it dead in its tracks. So you wanna wait 12 to 24 hours, 24 is better, after you get this Camden in there so that it can do its thing, and then it just goes inert and you can add your own yeast in. So what we're gonna do is let this sit overnight. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, so now that it's been 24 hours, now we can add our yeast. Mmm. And I just want to reiterate that the recipe I'm doing is not really a specific volume ratio. I'm just doing this to prove the concept that if you don't have enough fruit, you can always add some fruit juice to it in order to stretch it along and hopefully get a product that's very tasty and is going to work out for you. 
I'm 99% sure you're going to be able to taste the muscadines. And to that end, I have decided to go ahead and throw my blender in here to blend this up to bust up the fruit because those skins are rather thick. I really want to make sure that every cell wall is exposed if I can. And then I'm just going to strain it after it's fermented. One thing that you might want to do before you blend it up is get a sample of your juice so that you can get a gravity reading so you know you're starting gravity. This one is at 1.065. Let's go ahead and throw the yeast in before we blend it. So we're going to try co-pitching yeasts. We're going to do some Lalvin 71B and some K1V1116. Now we're going to lock this up. This is a vented cap. So if you're going to do this for wine, you should definitely use an airlock on your bucket. If you're doing this for an eventual hypothetical brandy, you don't necessarily need one. You just need it to stay covered so you can keep bugs and dust and crap from getting in there, but still allow the CO2 to escape so your bucket doesn't explode. Now, as with all fruit wines, you need to come through at least once a day, take a big spoon and stir down that cap, punch down the cap of fruit because it's all going to rise to the top and lock the CO2 inside and if you leave it too long the top layer is going to get dry and it's going to start growing mold and that'll ruin your entire batch. So stir it down at least once a day, preferably twice a day, so every 12 hours or so just to keep things fresh, keep things moving, keep things healthy. Hello again. Welcome to my bathroom. This feels familiar. Anybody else getting deja vu? It's been about a week and this stuff is fermented all the way out to dryness. I'll do a gravity reading once I strain it, but uh, let's go ahead and get this done. So I saved a little bit of the pulp in a container to hypothetically use in a thumper. So we're just going to let this sit for 24 hours so that it can settle and get all the uh, any more sediment and yeast down to the bottom and then we'll siphon out into the uh, boiler before we send it off to the liquor ferry. So now that it's time to run the muscadine brandy, that brings me to today's sponsor, Vivor. Those guys. The reason why I decided to review this still is because I've seen a ton of posts on the Reddit R Firewater section, people asking, are they any good? Let's take this thing apart and see what's going on. All right, so this, is the eight gallon version. And the reason why I wanted to get this one is because most of us in this hobby, we're brewing in some sort of a plastic bucket or um, water jug, something like that. And those are usually about five gallons or 20 liters. If you get a five gallon still and you have five gallons of wash, especially when you're brand new to the hobby, you wanna just get it all in there. But if you do that, you're gonna run out of headspace. Never throat your boiler. You don't want the wash coming all the way up to the top. You need some headspace in there to prevent stuff like puking. So if you order one of these, it comes all together. This is all that's in the box. What that means is this still is completely self-contained. So when you're done with it, you clean it up, you can shove everything back in the pot and stick it in the back of a closet or hide it out in the woods, whatever you need to do. You know, it doesn't take up that much room. So let's uh, crack this open and see what's inside. So right away you'll notice it's got its own gasket in there. A lot of the other ones you have to, uh, they have a loose gasket that you have to place on there. Now the only problem I see with this is you may have to pop it out of there in order to get it really clean. But uh, just be careful that you don't cut it when you're trying to get that out of there. Use something like a plastic fork or something to dig under there and pop that out so you can clean that gasket. So we got some silicone hose, that's for running our water lines for the condenser, thermometer. That's your main line arm to go into the thumper. Some little grommets and a nut, piece of copper tubing, rubber stopper, some grommets, and a little piece of silicone hose. And you've got a little water pump here. Maximum height is 100 centimeters, so that's pretty good. This is your condenser pot, your worm. Good copper line. Not a huge fan of the brass fittings. I'd prefer copper on that. And this little guy is your thumper. It's got good strong buckles on it, I like that. Comes with its own gasket for the lid. And last but not least, there is some stainless steel flex hose with these uh, little fittings. And that's gonna fit onto your uh, little brass fittings. 
All right, so there's one more feature about the Vivor that's kind of cool. They send you an airlock. You just put your thermometer in one hole and this guy down in there. And then you can use the kettle as a stainless steel fermenter, especially if you're gonna do all grain whiskey and ferment on grain, you could do your mash in there. Then just throw the lid on, put your airlock on and let it go. But one thing you need to remember is you cannot ferment in here and then start distilling. If you do that, you're gonna end up burning your stuff. Even if you just have a sugar wash, uh, the yeast is gonna end up settling to the bottom. So what you need to do, get your fermentation done. When that's complete, siphon it out to a bucket so that you leave all the, the sludge and everything behind. Then clean out your kettle, pour your clean wash back in, and then you can start distilling. Just wanted to make sure that that's very, very clear for everybody. This one is $115 on the Vivor website. You cannot go to the hardware store and get everything that you need to put together a still this complete for $115. It's not gonna happen. This is an eight gallon stainless steel kettle. This thing by itself is probably 60, 70 bucks. And then these uh, buckles that are on the side, those are about five or six bucks a piece. Uh, figuring out how to attach them without having a spot welder, that's tricky. To me, this still is perfect for somebody who says, I'd like to try that out. This is a still that you can use to jump into the hobby relatively quickly and find out whether or not you actually like it. You don't want to drop $600 on a bunch of equipment to find out that oh, this is kind of not my thing or I'm not making good stuff and I, I you know, I'm, I'm not really into it. So jumping into this with $115 is a lot more approachable for most people. This picture is kind of cool because it shows you how compact you can actually be with this thing, but I don't think that's the ideal configuration. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out something a little bit better and uh, I'll show you when I get done. So my dog is gonna drink all the water. Like, I hope you guys saved some water where you are. She's gonna drink all of it. You done already? Oh, that's a short, that was a little sip for her. All right, so I've got everything over here, just about ready to set up, and I wanted to point out one thing. This unit is supposed to have a thumper with it. This guy right here. This is not currently a thumper, because it has no down tube, and it doesn't come with one. Uh, so to me, that's a bit of a problem. One, it's mislabeled. Two, they don't have anything in there that's specifically made to give you a down to. However, for no extra money, you can use what's in the box to make a down tube for this thing and turn it into an effective, usable thumper. So let's do that. In your box of supplies that come with your Vivor, you have uh, some flexible silicon tubing. And it also comes with something else which is on the condenser, you'll notice that the output tube is a little short. They give you a, a little piece of silicone hose, not the same diameter as this stuff. It's a little bit narrower and a little piece of copper tubing that's the same diameter as the stuff in the worm. Plug that on there and you've got a little extension for your uh, output tube, but we really don't need that. There's a better way to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna repurpose this guy. Now this tubing is too small for what we need. So we're gonna take that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this silicone tubing for your water and you're gonna cut off about an inch to an inch and a half. Slip that on there. Now this will fit onto that guy. And now you have a down tube that'll work perfectly fine to go into your thumper. We line that up, that's pretty darn perfect. That goes down into the bottom, but not all the way. And so that leaves you a little bit of a gap uh, for the vapor to escape and then bubble down through whatever material you put in here. Make sure you include a little piece of steel wool or copper wool for your little copper tube to go on. That'll prevent it from getting clogged. Just like that. And you're ready to rock and roll. 
Which one did I put the copper on? Make sure you remember which one you put the down tube on so that when you connect it, the uh, outlet tube from the boiler goes to your down tube because you want that vapor to come out, go all the way down to the bottom, and then have no obstruction, and then it just rises to the top to come out of this one. Got it? If I skipped anything, or if you want a little more detail on thumpers and how they work and why they work, check out my thumper video right up here. So that's a downside with an upside. And again, it keeps us in that cheaper price point so we don't have to spend any more money to do exactly what we want. All right, so let's finish getting this thing together. You know, these flex hoses are a little bit fiddly, but they actually work great for what we're gonna do. Now, I set mine up differently than the way they do in the picture. Everything is on top of your main boiler. And I don't really like the idea of that for everything. If you want, you can definitely put your thumper up there because that's gonna pick up some heat from your boiler and they're just gonna help each other maintain that nice heat. Uh, but I don't like the idea of putting the condenser on top of the boiler for two reasons. One, it's also gonna pick up heat. It's gonna make your cooling less efficient for your condenser. And two, the outlet tube for your condenser would be too close to the fire if we just had it up here. It's gonna be dripping spirit or hanging a tube off the side a little bit too close to the flame for my personal taste. That's basically why they included that little copper extension tube to go on here, but we're gonna do something a little different. We can just use some more silicone tube to stick on there and it'll be fine. What's he doing with the vinegar? I'm gonna do a vinegar cleaning run because this is a brand new still. And despite the fact that everything looks perfectly clean and sanitized, this was in a factory. It was in a shipping warehouse uh, and then it came overseas. And you just never know if there could be some sort of chemical contaminant or maybe a spider crawled in one of the holes or something. You just never know. It's always a good idea, especially if you build your own still, to do a vinegar cleaning run. You can even do a sacrificial alcohol run after a vinegar cleaning run if you want to. And if you've never done one, it's really simple. Put some vinegar and water, 50-50 mix in there, put everything together and turn it on full blast and run it for about 15 minutes. That's it. Oh, also don't put any uh, cooling water through your condenser because you want that steam to touch every surface in the tube, not uh, lay down at the bottom and drizzle out. You want it to just scour everything. So I'm gonna put my muscadine wine that's fully fermented into this boiler. Then I'm gonna summon the liquor fairy once we have all of our jars. Then I think it's fair to make uh, an actual assessment of this still and uh, its pros and cons. I will see you in a little while after the liquor fairy has done their magic. Alright, so before we do the tasting of what the liquor fairy brought me, I want to go ahead and thank all of these people right down here and all of my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for constantly engaging with my posts and helping me to come up with new ideas and supporting me so that I can keep making these videos. Thank you guys so much for keeping the channel alive and my lights on. Thank you so much. So what I got back from the liquor fairy is about 600 mils of uh, the keepers. And that's kind of what I expected from a run like this with uh, a lower ABV wine and a smaller volume because there was so much sediment and fruit pulp and I didn't really strain the hell out of it. But it smells fantastic. It's, it definitely smells like the wine. And I'm also picking up a little bit of a peppery note from the uh, muscadine grapes. So it smells really good. This is definitely a grape brandy. But also there's an interesting kind of butterscotch note to it. And keep in mind, this is at 60%, so it's a little high. I'm interested to put this in a glass with a little bit of water and see what we have. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm still a little bit stuffed up from allergies today. I can smell the difference between the Concord grapes in the, the grape juice and the peppery sharp notes of the muscadine. Wow, okay, on the flavor, you get a much more pronounced pop of grapiness. 
Um, it's really smooth. There's an interesting sweet character. I'm not really picking up that kind of butterscotchy aroma. Butterscotchy isn't quite the right word. I don't know, sweet and buttery, but not quite to butterscotch. And, it, and there's a tiny bit of a pepper note, and I think that's from the muscadines. That's really good. Now I have to decide if I want to oak this. Right now, it's classified as an eau de vie because it's unaged. I have some French oak from my buddy Ken over at Barrel Charwood, so I think that might be interesting. And we're gonna let this sit probably for three months and then I'll do a quick taste. Man, that is amazing. It's literally been like two minutes since I put this in and it's already starting to pick up color. I love aging stuff. All right, so uh, last but not least, we gotta talk about the V4. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's 115 bucks. If you're new to the hobby or you're, you're just kind of interested in it and you wanna try it out, I can easily recommend the Vivor. You know, I made that little modification to turn it into a true thumper. You don't have to do that. You can just run it with a slobber box and it's gonna run fine. You're still gonna get good alcohol out of it. I just did this because I wanted to really infuse the flavor. And the best way to do that is to pump the vapor down into that liquid and get it to condense and then revaporize inside that flavorful mush. So uh, do it or don't. You know, it's up to you. And here's the other thing. You can run it without the thumper. You don't have to put that on. You can go straight from the pot over to the condenser with one hose and you're good. One of my Patreons actually said uh, he wasn't sure if something like this would be able to make whiskey. And I made a brandy. Brandy and whiskey are similar only in that they are flavored spirits that have a lot of flavor carryover from the initial wash into the distillate. So. I think this thing is perfectly capable of running a whiskey, rum, obviously brandy. And if you wanna get one or just check out their website cause they got a whole bunch of different ones. I'm gonna put the link down in the video description and also in the top comment. And there's a coupon code for you to use. If you're gonna get one, make sure you use that coupon code and then you'll get a discount on anything that you buy on the site. All right, so I've got to go edit this monster of a video. So if you enjoyed it, do me a favor and hit the like button because it really, really helps out the channel, tells YouTube that you value this kind of content and they'll help recommend it to others. If you wanna see what I'm gonna do next time, it's gonna be pretty cool. I've already got it done. Uh, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so that you can get notified when I post new content. If you have any questions, comments, you wanna share your own brandy recipe, especially if it's muscadine grapes, please post it down in the comments section down below. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later.